Okie dokie. Here's a uh, post weeding picture. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I can. And I think it's three, maybe four watermelon plants in there. They're reaching out to the sun. They've been moved around a little bit, so they look a little uh, beat up. There's one, two, three. I think I missed a cat. And I think there's another one in there, so fourth or in there. But now you can see the ground underneath the bean plant. So, and the dirt's been disturbed a little bit. Um, if I was fancy, I'd put some compost down, but I'm not. Um, I weeded in here. Weeded in here. Now there's just uh, sage there. There's a sage. And the uh, <coughs> sunflower plants. And we did right here and thinned out this uh, mustards and this uh, rutabakers. No, oh, turnips. These are turnips. My bad. And the rutabakers. I weeded and thinned them out. You know. Pretty good. I didn't do a perfect job, but give them some growing space. And I weeded back here. This is a lot of weeds. Um, I think it's that white moth is in here eating my beets. They're eating other stuff too, but they hide on other stuff. I think me weeding is going to lessen their numbers because they were living on the the weeds. They're probably, because I don't see any on these uh, beets. I think they crawl and eating the beets and then going back to the uh, the tall weeds. I saw some of them falling off and I killed a few of them. The little caterpillars, green ones and black ones. Fed a few to the birds, the ones I could get. But I saw a lot of them on the weeds I took away. So, they'll go on the compost pile. It'll get so hot in there, they won't really make it. So, I weeded most of this. Some of this, obviously, I missed. But, uh, weeding is not a perfection thing, I tell you. And most people, including me, hate weeding. It's probably the most. It's probably one of the parts of, uh, why people don't garden because they have to weed. Some people use tarps to stop the weeds. Um, it takes like a serious program if you do that and some money and some organization that I don't know if I have yet. Some people do like uh, tarps and they burn holes in them. And it's weed suppression. There'll still be weeds growing under there sometimes, but. Um, I didn't do that, so I got a weed. And even though it's kind of a pain in the ass, it takes up a day. You know what, how much weeding you got to do or how you're doing it. It takes up some time, but it does help your plants because the other plants are eating the food. So you remove the competition and you feed your plants better. You also pull them out the ground and kind of aerates the ground a little bit. Let some of the nutrients get back. If you want it to be fancy, you could take your weeds and use it as ground cover, like mulch. But I'm not the fancy. I'm just adding to the compost pile. Because these are all new beds. I guess I'm still weeding. And I got to go to do one more. I just want to show you a little bit of difference. So you can see the difference. And I'm coming up here and I'm still weeding because I see all these weeds that I missed. I think I got tired by the time I get back here. So, remove the competition. And uh, it makes a difference, trust me. It'd be better if you didn't have any weeds growing. But you'll get to that. You won't have no weeds growing, but 
you won't have like this many weeds like your second year because a lot of this stuff is in the ground and then when you dig up the soil you actually bring seeds to surface that's been uh waiting dormant you bring them to life and you wake up a lot of plants so the second year you don't have to till so much you can add some compost you can switch to like a no-till here go one of those bugs see what i'm talking about no no it's not but uh You add compost and uh, you won't have so many weeds. The no-till method, um, you have less weeds, but I had to till the soil. This stuff was uh, compacted. And the no-till method, some of these methods you see on YouTube and uh, Facebook and Instagram, wherever you see these different methods, uh, what they don't tell you is that shit costs a lot of money. Like, you know, a big bag compost is like $150 and you'll probably for the, some no-till methods you spend like back here you will spend like $300 just for this area just for compost and if you got that kind of money that's cool but that's why I was building compost piles and even the compost piles I built I didn't make enough piles to be doing all no-till so I got patience I got time um, this ain't no rush um, the second year, the compost I'm developing will, uh, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I can. You see how they have dirt disturbed there. So when I water now, more of the nutrients will go to the ground. These bugs on me. And, uh, yeah. Some of these methods, they cost a lot of money. And uh, most people ain't got that kind of money. So, some of this old fashioned stuff works. It just may take a little more time. You know, unless you're trying to go instantly to market, which you can do if you dust what you're doing. I, I just didn't have the money to do that. So, so we weed. There you go. Spend a week, day weeding. And I can tell the difference. A lot of them weeds are gone. Um, it's not perfect, but it's cleaned up, and I think the plants will be a little more happier. I think I took some of the pests away, too. Yep. There it is. It's my after picture. Now I gotta make it over to the, uh, I'm gonna make my way to the, uh, tomato patch, and, uh, weed over there and tie up anything that needs to be tied up and pinch off any suckers I see before the sun goes down and that's it I don't know if, yeah am I repeating myself? I think I am usual but that's it just the after pictures bam a lot more beets in there I took a couple cucumbers and a few beets today and uh, I'm gonna make a cucumber beet salad with them greens that I thinned out with them rutabaga and then my rutabaga greens. And there's one of them over here that I kind of pulled up. I, I should have just kept it. I reburied it in the bedrooms. This one, yeah. This one I'm gonna have to, because I pulled this one out the ground. I don't think it's gonna make it. This is a tiny one. The rest of them is a big old big one. Look at that. See the difference? That's a big difference. They're all different sizes, but that looks more like a nice beet in the store. But this one is a nice beet. These greens are good too. The beet greens. If I was juicing, I'd juice these. These are good for juicing. Or you can eat them with the salad. I'm not going to eat these because, well, some of them I can eat. They're pretty good. But I'm going to add this to my little uh, beet cucumber thing. And I heard a beet and cucumber salad. Now I see why you would make that, because you got beets and cucumbers. All right, let me get over to the tomatoes for the sun go down. And I'm out. That's it.
Got a clean bed. Clean bean bed. And let's hope this watermelon give me some watermelons. Oh, I want to show you the one watermelon plant that might be hopeful because it's out in full sun out there. It's starting to move. I don't think I've had successful watermelons, but this one looks promising. Look at that. And it's got some blooms on it, so it's getting full sun. And it's kind of over here on the mat corner. Oh, somebody just thought it was funny that I called it uh... Beats by Dre. Yes, I did name it that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> One of my co workers thought that was hilarious. That's, that's a real thing. All right, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Little ones are good too. Shalom.